Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here and you are looking for a friendly, supportive vermicomposting community, you are in the right place. Today I'm going to be looking at my red wigglers in my tower system and talking to you about the best starting worms ever and why you just can't go wrong with red wigglers. So first off, we're going to look at the top, which I'm going to call layer number five. I've actually labeled these so that I can remember what I'm doing where. So off at the top, and so this one is the one that we are going to try and harvest here pretty soon. This is our pre-harvest tray. And basically everything here, in theory, should be mostly done except for the really big stuff. So the goal is to get the worms to come out of this and go into the lower level, which is being fed. So I'm just gonna kind of pick out all the big things here so that I can relocate them to the feeding layer. Give me one second. So I just uh, kind of come in here and pull out of the big things because I know that uh, the sifting that I will do later, which is not necessary, but I prefer to sift my castings, um, mostly because of the seeds that may germinate. Um, inside uh, my garden. Sometimes I end up with a couple hundred of the, uh, I don't know, tomato seeds, pepper seeds, melon seeds hatching. And uh, then, honestly, if I kind of forget what I'm doing, then I don't know which one I planted and one, which one's a volunteer. Volunteers absolutely have a place in my garden. Uh, generally, they're all going to be Amish paste tomatoes in Anaheim or Hatch chilies, but uh, for, I would rather uh, have the ones that I planted on purpose. So I've just got this little bit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of the aggravation method by putting the next layer down under this so that we can get rid of these worms and hopefully harvest this and then this can go into blue to dry out. Okay, so per the aggravation method, I am just going to grab up all the stuff that doesn't have any worms in it, and I'm going to toss this over into blue to dry out. So it's sort of like the uh, light harvest, only basically you're making the worms want to move down. So instead of me having a worm ball at the end, they're just going to go into the next layer. So in theory, because I fed the layer down uh, from this, most of these worms should be out of here. I shouldn't have to work too hard to aggravate them to get the stragglers out of this layer. So here where I live, it is getting to be colder. We did have a couple of days that were approximately 15 degrees below freezing. The worms in the basement, they, you know, it will never get to be colder than probably 55 degrees in the basement, which is 55 degrees Fahrenheit is actually a really good temperature for the red wigglers. And that's gonna be my first point as to why red wigglers are really the you know easiest worms to start with. So just talking about the temperature that red wigglers are good at, um, basically they can live and continue to eat and be successful down to basically a freezing temperature. And uh, they may slow down and not eat as much or reproduce as much. The cocoons won't be hatching, but they will live and be just fine at a freezing temperature. Similarly to the, the lower end of their range, uh, basically they will be fine all the way up to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put the Celsius up there on the screen. And again, at the higher temperature, they will in fact, you know, reproduce less, they will eat less. They'll kind of go into a little um, hibernation on both ends. So if they get too cold, they'll kind of hibernate a little bit. And if it gets too hot, they'll hibernate a little bit. They'll just slow down so they don't die, basically. Okay, now I'm gonna start doing the fluffing part here. And hopefully whatever small amount of worms are, are in here will take the hint and move to the layer below. Get my little riser things out. These are just to kind of distribute the weight of the bin so that uh, it doesn't compress too much. Um, I was given that advice by some people that have had systems like this for years and they said that um, it will help the 
the plastic live longer if there's not so much stress on it. So I got these little, uh, they're actually water pipe, water supply lines. And here, at least in the United States, that's about a three quarters or a one inch diameter plastic PVC pipe. And uh, it's pretty strong and you don't have to worry about it um, degrading or anything like that. Okay, so there I have, I have aggravated them. I'm gonna give them a little bit of time to get down into the, the realm of the tray below and uh, <clears throat> then we will keep scooping. And uh, if any of the worms do remain and the cocoons uh, do remain in this, then they will just go live in blue now. So no worms will be lost in this uh, situation. Okay, looks like they're almost ready. Just kind of flatten them out here and give them a little bit more time to dive down into the layer below. All right, and there we are, that's the end of it. So I'm gonna dump the rest of this in blue and then we'll look at the next layer down. Okay, so this is the next layer down. I think this is where we fed last time, at least that's the plan, right? That we feed the food so that the pre-harvest tray at the top makes all the worms go down to the bottom. Yep, you can see just a tiny little bit of peppers. So here is also, if I can hold still good enough, you can also see that there are a little bit, a few of the pot worms, which are snow white. And uh, they're kind of a, a relative, I think, to a compost worm. So they're not a problem, but they're just an indication that the worms needed a little bit of help breaking down the food and there they are. But I don't see a lot of food left over. Um, Nothing really in the avocado shell there. I've been doing a lot of uh, canning, so there's probably a lot of uh, leftover peppers and tomatoes, etc. And all the white dots that you see in here are the um, eggshells that I do put in with my prepared bedding, which is a, a, a remnant of the original bin that they were in. Uh, this bin, I have just been putting dry paper in the bottom layers and letting all of the liquid from the upper layers inoculate the ones below. So this one here, even though it's got a few little crumbs left, this is going to be the pre-harvest tray the next time that we come and feed. So this tray is not going to get fed this time. This is going to go all the way up to the top. So we're gonna put this aside, and then we're gonna go look at the tray below, which is the one we're gonna feed, so that these worms will get out of here and go to the place with the food. All right, hang on, let me go swap out the trays. Okay, so this was basically just ye old paper when I first started this bin a month or two ago. So this didn't even have any coconut coir in it, or anything and it's amazing what the worms have done already um, I think there's I'll have to go back and check but there should be about five pounds of worms you can see just a little bit of the cardboard in the corners here so this bin I'm gonna just fluff it up make sure there's no remnants of things that have gone anaerobic in the corners but then this is the bin or this is the layer that is going to get the food this time. So let me kind of uh, spread things out here and get them some food. Okay, so they're getting uh, leftover green tomatoes. I have put up a lot of salsa verde and chutney and um, all kinds of things and I still had a ton of green tomatoes left. So the worms are gonna be the benefactors of my uh, green tomato harvest. So I'm gonna just kind of cover that up a little bit. And then this is going to be the second tray from the bottom now. Let's go take a peek and see what the, 
the paper trays that were paper not too long ago. This is tray number two. This is the original tray that I put just shredded cardboard and paper in when I first started the bin. So you can see that they are already well into all of this material here. I'm just gonna fluff it up, make sure nothing's getting sticky and anaerobic here. And although it's very, you know, visible that this is just bedding, no food down here, haven't fed this at all. You can see the worms are perfectly happy to go down in here and just eat cardboard. Which comes to my second reason why red wigglers are the best for beginners. They'll eat just about anything. These uh, red wigglers here have come down and are hanging out and eating the bedding where there's not even any people food. So they're not fussy. They will go ahead and they will just take whatever is available, whether it is shredded leaves from your outside or your people food or leftover cardboard and paper. And so that makes it really easy for you. You don't have to have any special diet for them. You don't have to uh, buy anything. You can just uh, give them yield cardboard boxes, shredded or not shredded, and they will be absolutely happy. Let's look at the bottom layer of the bin. This is layer number one. This is where I just put cardboard in the last time that I was feeding. Did not feed it anything. This was straight up just uh, shredded cardboard and paper. And that's all it is. And um, it's doing really well. It also has quite a few worms. Now I'm gonna have to go get into the sump area where I've put a little bit of paper down there because for some reason the worms are going down there anyway even though I told them not to. So here is the worm ladder. I believe that's what it's called. And the worms are supposed to use that to come back up when they've made bad life choices and have gone down into the sump. You can see some of them are using the ladder, but uh, as I will bring a clump of worms back here in a moment, some of them are not. They're just hanging out there doing what they want. You know what I say? Worms do what they want. Okay, that is the pile of worms that was in the bottom. Quite a few of them doing what they want. Doesn't smell bad, but they were definitely not utilizing the worm ladder to get back up into the worm bin. Now, because we harvested one layer, I'm going to get a new layer and put cardboard, shredded cardboard in it, dry, and put it in the bottom. And because this is gonna be the bottom bottom, I'm gonna put those risers in this level so that it can help support the weight from up above. All right, so this is going to become layer number one. This is the old layer number one. It will become layer number two. This is the old layer number two, and it is going to be layer number three. Old layer number three is now going to be layer four, which is the feeding tray. Okay, and old layer number four becomes number five. And that brings us to my last point as to why red wigglers are the best worms for beginners is how fast they reproduce. Looking at my fingers here, I have a lot of tiny little worms. They reproduce like nuts. And each one of their cocoons can have up to, like this cocoon right here on my finger. This one could possibly have, depending upon how mature the worm was that laid it, it could have up to six babies in it. They won't necessarily hatch if they're not under ideal conditions, which is because you want your babies to have the best in life, and so they basically will hang out and wait for good, wait for good conditioners, temperature, moisture, food availability. And then when it does, that's when you have a boom of the babies in the spring. So that's when people ask, how long does it take a cocoon to hatch? It depends. If it is the ideal conditions for red wigglers, then they will absolutely hatch in two or three weeks. But if it is like it is now on the downward slide for temperature, then they might wait 
three, four months. And under extreme conditions where things are very dry or very hot, they may, may, they may actually go completely dormant and wait six months to a year to hatch. So if you ever forget about your worm bin and it dries out, don't think it's dead yet. Add more water to it, add some fresh bedding, no food, just some fresh bedding, and make sure that the moisture is like this. That's a really good moisture for them. And then give it a couple, three or four weeks, and then go back in there. I bet you will find some baby worms because they are very resistant. These cocoon, this cocoon is pretty yellow, which means it's pretty new. But when they get to be kind of an amber color, that means that they're more mature and they're closer to hatching. But if they've gone dormant, then you know they may actually stay that way for a very, very long time. And I will put in the um, description below the books that I have read to learn all of this, as well as my own, you know, I'm giving you my own experience as to what I have experienced since I started raising red wigglers. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video, I have a whole playlist for the Red Wigglers right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like that video right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.